Episode of PDR Tool Time. This is episode 137. And myself, Daniel Grom, with Vince D'Alessandro and John Rinstrom. How you guys doing? Fantastic. Hi, John. How uh, are you today? Uh, doing great, man. Having a good day. Good. I just want to just want to mention this episode is being brought to you by Hog Glue, Magnetic Mat, and Mobile Tech on. Mobile we tech. love Mobile Tech RX. <laughs> yes, I can't say enough good things. So, how's uh, how's your guys' week going? It's been <laughs> kind of a weird week. I know John, John, and I were talking previous to starting the the, the podcast. And he's having a weird week. I'm having a, a little bit of a strange week as well. You know, do, do you think it's like the weather? Because you you feel the change in the weather, right? Yeah, and yeah. It, it puts you in a different mood. I think. My week died off. I got, I got this huge job. We sent in the supplement right away. Uh, this thing was a monster. Now I did triple it on the sup, but I don't know who the adjuster was, but apparently, um, yeah, he should use Braille if he's that hard of seeing. I mean, it was, it was bad. So, and I'm still sitting on it. Here it is. We sent this up in on Monday. It's Thursday. I finally left Wyoming. We're not going to fix it till Monday. The sup still hasn't come back. Um, the body shop sends off the, email and a telephone call oh yeah we're gonna get to it in two hours two hours two and it's hours. it's been four days four days so, so how much do you charge a day for storage do you charge a day for uh, for that it's not my shop i don't get i don't get the option gotcha. i'm just the grunt well the they back. should be sending them a, a daily invoice for storage fees yeah yep that that should get them off their, their <laughs> stuff but i did hit this one and we talked about this in the before and this thing was off the charts. Now, I know you two have both rode on some hail cars here recently and been off the charts. Vince, you posted up. You did a $10,000 hit on a roof on a Suburban. <laughs> yep. Now, this time, I pulled all of the oversized dents and just put it on a bottom line in the miscellaneous category on Mobile Tech RX. I just put oversized dents on complete vehicle, 39 of them at $40 on oversized. And we kicked it off to them and because otherwise my hood and roof were going to be clean off the charts. So yeah. we're going to see this company is so slow. You know, we were hoping to hear good, bad or ugly. And I just haven't heard anything. So I'll find out Monday morning. Finally. So let me ask you this. Do you, do you look at conventional and try to stay within parameters? No. no. And, and here's why. Um, I stopped caring. <laughs> You know, to, to narrow that down bluntly, I absolutely stopped caring about uh, conventional cost and having to fix every single car. Because when you get it in your mindset that you have to be the one to fix every single car, everybody knows it. Yeah. So you're just going to be working cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Good point. And now, there's times where it's like, look, we're like 200 bucks, you know, one way or the other. And it's like, well, I don't care. I'll, I'll do it. That sure. doesn't matter. Sure. But man, when I'm I'm looking at one Vince, like the rig that you wrote, I can only hit twenty five hundred on those, and that's it. And yeah. it goes for replacement. Yeah. So, and I'm, I've done enough of Suburbans, Yukons, uh, Tahoes, uh, all of them that I'm just like gone. I don't. I'm yeah. going to go these other four cars in the same time frame. Exactly. And they're right. going to make more money. And yeah, so, and that was my mentality behind it. I wasn't going to sit there for and give it away for free. I'm going to lose all yeah. this money and work if I do it for any less than what I did it for. So if, exactly. if I got it, I got it. If I didn't, no harm, fault, no foul. No yeah. harm, no foul. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, like, so I, I had a Highlander and it's an older Highlander. And um, so I, I looked up conventional on the hood and I wrote it $200 less than conventional. So, because I wanted the job, it was, and as long as that's a comfortable number for you, yeah, it was a comfortable number, and I wanted the job. Um, I 
I want to control the whole thing. I didn't want to go into a shop or anything. And um, so I wrote a front of that and I ended up writing a $7,900 $7, estimate on the whole thing. And um, the, the guy came back with, well, 8,000 kicking it to, um, to a total. And I go, huh? Cause I, I also checked the, the blue book on it and I thought blue book was about 12 for a Highlander. They usually, you know, command more money. Yeah. And, um, so I was like, uh, I wonder if he's bullshit me, but I had a $300, um, cleanup fee, you know, for polishing and, and whatnot. Oh yeah. And, uh, he goes, if you, if you, uh, write it for $300, $300 less, I'll do it. And I said, done. And so I got it for $7,600. So, um, that works. I was happy. Yeah. Well, and happy. Daniel, you have to think, and John could correct me if I'm wrong, but if the value is $12,000, if you go over half the value, they could technically total it. So if your repair is over $6,000, it could be totaled. Yeah. Half um, the value. Why half the value? I don't understand. Because salvage value. Salvage. So, uh, you know, normally it used to be way back in the day, 75% was total loss and everybody went on the 75% threshold. So given that on your $12,000 rig, that's $9,000 would have been total. So I can see where mm. a Toyota Highlander holds a pretty high salvage value and hail cars hold even a higher salvage value. Yeah. There's because, nothing mechanically wrong with them or anything. It's just, yeah. Cosmetic. And when they go to auctions, a lot of people are like, well, it's just hail. So yeah. they'll, yeah. they'll bid them up like buying it off a car lot, two or $3,000 under book. And insurance companies know this. Uh, I talked to a gentleman mm. in Colorado Springs who had a farmer's adjuster in there and the farmer's adjuster said, look, I get to dictate what is total loss. He'll total a car at 42% to screw a PDR company just for sport. Oh, wow. And send that car to auto auction. If it's a car they know sells hot at auto auction, boom, down to the auto auction. I got guys, uh, the owner of the body shop that I'm at, he doesn't work at the shop. He's got a manager and everything else, but he has also got a car lot. He's got rental property. I mean, this guy's got his fingers in everything. And he's like, hey, I'm thinking about buying a, a car at the auto auction. There's hail cars rolling through all the time. And I'm like, don't do it. Yeah, yeah. They're going for just under book value and need $10,000 worth of hail repair. Oh, sure. So that's why the total loss threshold is, is so random. Now, I will drop this little bomb on y'all. Eric and I just had a conversation. Um, we've been beating on NADA to try to get book values included into mobile tech RX. Mm. And originally it was going to cost, it would cost upwards of a hundred bucks a month per person using mobile tech RX. And we're like, no, that's ridiculous. It's uh, there for the handful of people that that is worthwhile. It's useless for everybody. Yeah. Else. Yeah. So we've spent the last six months working with them, talking with them and dealing with them. And I think we finally came out with a realistic agreement and we're going to be able to put this in there. Now, what's, oh. d does the rest of the country use NADA? Because everyone out here uses, uh, uh, you know, triple or not triple Kelly, uh, Kelly blue book. Yeah. NADA is the most popular and that's what insurance companies generally run their book they do. values. Okay. By. That's good to know. So, um, because it's done by region and, and everything like that. Okay. So as we were discussing how we're laying this out, we're trying to figure out if we put total throt, total loss thresholds in the system. And then we can't come up with a solid number from 42 to 75%. It's such a huge range. Yeah. And I'm yeah. seeing it everywhere. So what we're going to do is, you know, you, the user needs to know where the insurance company that you're dealing with is. And then we're going to set it where you can adjust where that total loss threshold is for that insurance company. Like in company. the back office, you could, uh, you could adjust it. Uh, we haven't decided yet. We're still mathing out, playing out, and actually working with our programmers to figure out, you know, where it's going to be smooth, where we're going to add it. Sure. Uh, it's most likely because there is a lot of additional cost on our end. We're going to put it in with the uh, comparative pricing, where all the other pricing figures are already done, and that should make it a little bit less in the programming end on on our side. Uh -huh. And then that allows us to just absorb the cost. Awesome. Because there is a pretty good overhead on it. Oh, but sure. we got them down to a reasonable dollar amount. Nice. So, nice. Well, good. Well, good, good, good. All good stuff. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But speaking of hail on these things, Daniel, you were just talking about new hail bar? 
Yeah, actually. Um, so I'm working on this, this car and I'm comparing all the hail rods that I have. And one surprised me. It kind of just kind of came out of left field and I'm like, Oh my God, I, I love this thing. And it was the Endeavor square hail rod. Now here's the thing is this thing is not super long. It's kind of your mid range hail rod, but there's, there's a couple things that are really standing out on this thing. One is his tip end and it's got four uh, angles on it and they're set at very specific angles. So normally your hail rods are 90 degrees, right? Yeah. And you stick yeah. that rod in and you're already at an angle when you're using that rod. So that 90 is actually coming back at you. And that drives me nuts, you know, that these guys are doing 90 degrees, 90 degrees. It shouldn't be 90 degrees. I don't know why all the hail rods are 90 degrees because you're coming in at an angle, no matter what car you're working on. Well, not, I guarantee you. Not always at an angle, but yeah. Uh, but, I'd say 80%, 90%. I'd say most people side load rather than come in, you know, directly at a 90 degree angle, you know? So, okay. You know, so a, a little bit them, off angle. He has them at, set at like, I think he told me seven degrees. So when you, I took a picture of it today and your, your rods at an angle, but that, that tip is at a true 90 degrees to the panel. when you're actually working on it. Mm. So I really, I really like the thought of that. Number two is it's a square hail rod. So that's and, what I was just going to say. On the square rod, you're not side loading the way you can on a round rod. No, it it's so thing. stable. You're like, oh my god, this thing. You you can actually work it with one hand. Where a round hail rod, you you almost have to use two hands to keep it stable and from rolling on you. And when you feel how stable it is, you're using one hand, and it's very very light. And then he's got this great sliding handle so it's a uh, a carbon fiber handle that's got these weird shapes on the inside of it so you twist it a quarter turn and it allows you to slide up and down the handle and choke up on it and then you twist it and it locks and it's brilliant i mean it took some thought for him to design that um, and he told me about how much effort it took. And so you can choke up on this thing, lock it into position. It's really comfortable, feels really good in your hand, but it's so stable that you can actually push with one hand with no problem. And after using all, all of them, I was like, this is my go-to. Now it doesn't serve the purpose that the other two do because you can make the other two longer. So, well, I'm on his website right now uh, with you talking, and I'm seeing 78 inch um, is his longest rod. So um, that's what six and a half feet looks like his yeah. longest. So. And for the most part, that'll get you, you know, all your side, all your side. If you're working through a, a side window or and stuff, it'll get you wherever you're going, and working about from the back of a SUV or something like that, you're getting about, um, you know, probably a quarter, a little bit more than a quarter of the back distance. So it, it takes care of about, um, probably what 70% of, of what you're working on before you have to pull out an extra long rod. Yeah. Well, six feet is still, yeah. still pretty good length. I'm curious at um, what do they say? The it's inch and a quarter. So, you know, you get a chance. I want to hear how it works into a box side. What your thoughts are? It, through a what? A bed in the box side through bed. through the taillight opening on a on a on pickup a box on a bed. We call them beds out here. Yeah, yeah. bedside box side. Yeah. Um. Oh. Yeah, I haven't tried it there. It feels as light as the Carbon Tech. Yeah. Um, and then he has a custom handle for it. Correct. Yeah, 
And And the way I look at that handle, it looks like it would slide up and down the shaft. Sorry, John. Were were you just not listening to me? (laughs) I just told him that. I don't know if you really need dent guys with something that moves up and down the shaft all day long. I just wanted to say um, that, Daniel. (laughs) Now, uh, on the sliding handle, does that have pretty good tension? I mean, but you said it locks? Yeah, it does lock. Yep. So, Um, okay. Yeah, no, it's... It's hard to explain, but yeah, you, you basically turn it a quarter inch in it or a quarter turn and it slides up and down freely. And then you turn it in a corner the, the other way and it locks. So you can slide it up and down the rod and, and lock it into place, whatever position you want. Yeah. You can choke just, up on it, but it's the it stability. Stiff, you spit on it just a little bit. <laughs> Come on. You guys are nasty. Now, Man. Daniel, th- this isn't now. Th- we don't have this rod, so we can't speak of it. So we're going to ask you a couple questions. And the main yep. thing is, you know, obviously eighty twenty is something that you could, you could buy, uh, but there's more to this rod than just buying it. Kind of like yeah, this isn't price. just slapped together from the Ace hardware. No, no. no. this no. isn't going it's, on. It's in, got a machined end that you would spend. It would it would cost you probably six hundred bucks to get it machined at the at your local machine shop. Yeah, and then um, and then the handle alone would probably cost, uh, you know, it wouldn't be worth it. It wouldn't be worth it. Okay, yeah, because yeah. no, I know not you know there's there's talk of eighty twenty. Yeah, the you know what what yeah. what guys don't understand is um, is the development that goes into like my tank vice or this guy's rod. We spent I spent two years developing my tank vice. I mean, two years of hard freaking work i mean yeah and that's free work yeah if i added up the time that i spent developing my tank vice it it'd be astronomical sure um it it you know you know what it's like now vince to develop your own tool oh absolutely it's 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 guys don't understand and that's that's the problem with our industry is we're a small industry when we produce a product in low volume it costs the consumer a lot of money yeah yeah well even and, even john could probably attest to that with mobile tech rx i mean oh god those, you guys don't even want to know some of the stuff that we've had to scrap and how much money it was oh you sure know? yeah i'm just I'm straight sure. up because it didn't work so yeah, but that's part of the it? risk of being a business and and yep. own it and starting a tool company if you had to ask me if i wanted to do it all over again i probably wouldn't do it i i, I wouldn't yeah. do it i would pass well, on that's my why idea i buy all these else. guys tools yeah yeah and you know? you guys out there are listeners, you know, please try to understand that and support guys like us and, and guys like Endeavor, because if it, if we don't support them, we won't get new stuff, Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. Yep. period. The industry doesn't involve and right. uh, you they know, need that innovation. In all the small, small tool companies, we all wish to one day be like, you know, a James Lee or a Carl Stuckey that hit it out of the park and stuff like that. But the chances of that happening are, are really, you know, it's going to be rare. Those guys still have stress, too. Oh, I mean, absolutely. James Lee is stressed out. That guy doesn't and, sleep and, at all. Know, yeah, he's, you got, you're trying to deal with your parts suppliers and all the individuals that you're dealing with. And then, you know, you're trying to make different corporate agreements with other companies to, you know, so... You don't have to share product. Next thing you know, you're getting run through the ringer, and they're yeah. you know you're not getting your money's worth. And some of not, the stories, that, some of the stories I hear of what they have to deal with in China. You know, they send them a product uh, and and to from their specs, and it comes back and it's looks like shit. Yeah, you know? or yeah. even and then have to deal with the the technicians that are buying it and running it over with a car, and be like, uh, this is covered under warranty, right? Or I dropped it <laughs> off of a you know a, a Sprinter van roof. And it cracked yeah. in half. You're, you're going to warranty that, right? You know, yeah. So there's all sorts of nonsense that you have to deal with exactly. on a daily basis. Exactly. No. You know, uh, from our end, uh, my phone won't read this barcode. So what I need you to do is build me a better camera in my phone. Right. <laughs> and it's like, uh, dude, we're software, not hardware. <laughs> um, yeah. I can't, I can't reinvent your phone. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, so we all have our struggles with our, our businesses. And, and please be mindful of that, listeners. You know, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not, we're not making things for Walmart, for Wally world or for Lowe's or home Depot, yeah. where there's tens of thousands of them being made. 
And I'm not sure if, how many of you out there have actually gone and met a bunch of these tool makers, but they aren't the Waltons from Walmart. You know, you're not, you're not building, uh, this aluminum rod. You're not building one of these carbon fiber rods. You're not, you're not making any of that stuff and making billions of dollars a year. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're in it for the love of building a better product. Sure. Yeah. So. Well, good. Yeah. So that, I, that, I look forward to seeing that Endeavor stuff. I know, uh, I had been in contact with him, but, uh, he, I talked to him today. He's, he's sending you something to play with. Oh, cool. That's cool. <laughs> Which I appreciate, you, but you guys know me. If I get a tool and I don't like it, uh, regardless if I pay for it or if uh, it's comped or uh, I, if I don't like it, I don't talk about it. So, you know, that's that's one of my personal policies. I, I'm not quick to uh, post things on the internet as soon as I get something. I got to try it out and make sure that it's worthwhile. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, I like to put them through their pace. I do. Uh, most of the time, I see something from somebody else posting, and then I call up and just get it ordered because yeah. it's like, and I just got, uh, I just got my James Lee version three light. Picked it up right after we got to town, so I've only had it here, and I forgot one of my Makita battery packs at the shop, so oh, I don't no. even get to turn it on. Uh, uh, but I will say, Ace Ventura delivered that package to my mailbox. Really, Ace Ventura, and himself, that huh? light, yeah, that light is perfect so those puppies can take a pounding and be just fine out of that thing <laughs> uh, the guy at my ups store where we get all the mail is like uh i didn't mean to peek in there but dude that come in pretty bad and i wanted to make sure it wasn't broke to call you <laughs> you know they know us they know us really well and we don't have any problem with them opening up our, our stuff yeah. but there was only one end of the box still taped shut oh geez and my <laughs> brand new you know power suction cup yeah <laughs> mini light a 600 hundred dollar light uh just got delivered by ace ventura i mean that box was beat yeah i was gonna that, ask you how much how much do they cost i i haven't bought one yet uh i because, believe msrp is is right at 600 yeah because i bought i bought version two about six or eight months ago but i bought a 20 inch and i might turn around and buy another another one you know go back to the 14 inch which i've i was rocking for a long time yeah and i really wanted to give that thing through its pace and i stopped at the lowe's uh hardware store here in town but they don't carry a makita so i couldn't get a battery for it. it was a bummer yeah. so yeah. now i gotta wait till sunday 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 so let's uh switch gears and yeah i i think you have an announcement right there vince Oh, I got a lee a wee little bit announcement that I want to share with you our listeners. You want audience. to talk about it? Yeah, yeah, I do. Can we talk about it? We can Big now. Secret? We can we now can, talk about can? it. Oh, yes. And, oh, yes. it's out. In the okay, open. drum roll. Okay. Okay. Uh, as you guys know, Craig and Christina uh, from Ants and Tools were out was out in Long Beach, California, visiting with me last night or last night. Last week. Last week. And uh, the reason why they were out here is because we have been in talks for about the last eight months as to getting some things going. And it's official. I am now an employee of Anson PDR Tool Company. And what are you going to do for them, Vince? Well, I have a few roles. And all these roles I will be running from beautiful Long Beach, California. Uh, First and foremost would be... I. I'm heading to England, jolly old England, in November over Thanksgiving to get my IMI teacher accreditation. So awesome. when I come back, I will be accredited to be teaching the IMI EV level two uh, classes. And also while I'm there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get the most bang for my buck. I'm going to be there for about 10 days. Uh, I'm going to be also certified in PDR as well. So I will be able to, over in Europe, they do have a, a certification for PDR technicians. So uh, I'm trying to anticipate Do you think you'll that. pass? I hope so. <laughs> Study hard. I have been. I have been studying hard. I'm taking it very serious. And I think that's why they chose me to uh, to take on, take on this endeavor with them. Is, uh, it's a joint task with, that, with TDN and Anson. So uh, if you guys know, the, the ones that have taken the EV class or, or have looked into it, it's Kevin Andrews from TDN that flies over from England to teach this class. And it's very limited, and we have to try and get a, a, a handful of people to make it worth his while to come. And quite frankly, it's not worth his while. 
Uh, yeah. He, it's yeah, a, he's paying it out of pocket. We need an American trainer. Exactly. So their great idea was to get an American trainer to uh, be able to fly around the country, teach a whole bunch of you guys all in one location or in Texas or in California or, or Wyoming or wherever you guys want to do it. Or the World Cup or... The know, World Cup, exactly. So Mobile uh, Tech R at, or Mobile Tech Expo. Expo. Yeah, we will be teaching classes at Mobile Tech Expo. We have a unofficial class coming up right after SEMA, which will be November 4th at uh, Front Range PD Art in Colorado, in Colorado, which is Anson yeah. Roberts and Wade Hartley's shop. Yeah. So, uh, Daniel, sorry to tell you this, but I'm leaving SEMA on Saturday and flying straight to Colorado to teach that class. Man. And you know what? I think John Renstrom's close enough that he could drive down for that. Maybe. I don't know. It's kind of far. I have to see. When was that? November? November 4th. November 3rd is going to be a tech greeting on Saturday, and then November 4th will be the IMI training. So the Wade, Wade Harley has a shop? I didn't know that. Yeah. He, uh, he moved to Colorado. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Well, Daniel, if you actually stayed on Facebook instead of just throwing out questions or or uh, or uh, posts and then running and never answering your uh, your own <laughs> questions... <laughs> I have a busy life. You understand this. I understand that. But someone called me and complained about it today. He said, how come Daniel doesn't answer the questions after <laughs> he posts a question and then we ask him a question I, and he doesn't it, respond? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I drop it and forget it. And <laughs> I forgot. You said November 4th? November 4th. Yes. I have a serious doctor's appointment at 830 November 5th. Okay. Well, you can still do. Uh, uh, it's oh, a okay. seven hour drive. Yeah, never mind. I know where Anson shop is. Or, yeah, where Anson Roberts shop is. There yeah. in so Anson Roberts shop in, in Front Range. Anyways, I'm the new IMI instructor for the United States. So Awesome. Yes. Awesome. That, and I'm also going to be doing support with uh, different product uh, pictures and videos for the products that Anson comes out with. And not just Anson, but also all the other products that they carry. Everything that they carry. Yeah. Nice. So a That'll lot of these tools will be going naturally through my hands, and uh, I'm not going to be biased. If something sucks, I'm not going to talk about it on this show. I might, you know, uh, have to be unless it sucks so bad we have to discuss how bad it really sucked. True, but <laughs> I'm obligated to at least take a picture of it and uh, post it for them. But if something is a turd, I will not be talking about it on this show. But, That's good news, man. I, I'm very proud of you. That's it, awesome. Yeah. Congratulations, man. It's, it's important to me for the uh, the integrity of PDR Tool Time to continue, even though I'm tied in with the tool company now. So, yeah. Ah, but Actually, you're not tied in with one tool training. company. You're tied in with a seller of multiple That's, tool companies. Exactly. That's people true. need to know what tool to buy. That's my favorite part about Anson is getting in there and – Fingering tools from so many different manufacturers. Did you say fingering tools? I finger them. Oh, I'm all up in them, loving them strong. <laughs> I'm like a kid in a candy store. Christina, every time I come in there, she just, her and my wife walk off because they're like, well, John needs to restudy the layout to make sure he knows where everything's at. Because yeah. <laughs> I study that store from top to bottom. Yeah. You know, it's like, oh, I know where that is at. Come with me. <laughs> right. And the cool thing is, like, I love it. All this I could do right from California, but I am going to be moving to uh, Texas in about 18 months from now. Anson 2.0 will be built by November of next year, October, November. Nice. Okay. And uh, when that's done, uh, my, my son, I want him to finish grade school in the school that he's at, and that will be next year. And then we will be on our way to uh, sweltering, hot, humidified <laughs> Texas. 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 Yeah. And the new shop will be in Burleson, correct? Burleson, correct. Yeah. So, and guys, you're going to want to check that out. If you get the opportunity to head out there to the Anson open house, um, the new shop, I've, I've seen the photos talked with Christina and Craig on that. It's going to be badass. Oh, I mean, it's immediately badass. all under one roof. Um, I think they're still talking about having a training center yep. there. Okay? We'll have a training seminar. So or there's se going to be a classroom. That'll be my domain. Classroom? That'll yeah. be my, that'll be my room. That'll be kick ass. Yeah. So all that, right. yeah, it's it's all good news. I mean, I love the people at Anson, and don't think that this was something that was easy to uh, to ha make happen. You know, it, it's yeah. I, I have a, a business. Big decision. That I, it's a big decision. Yeah. I have a business that I built over eighteen years 
that uh, is now up for sale. So, you know, I talked to a broker today. So if anyone is interested in moving to Southern California and walking into a, a business that's already established, give me a call. And I'm serious. Yeah. Nice. And and plus you've got your painter is going to stay there, right? He's staying. So you got yeah. a built-in so you got awesome a built-in painter. painter. Yeah. Yeah. Does bumpers, does great work. Yeah. So which awesome. leads us to the next topic, which is, you know, the back office help. And, you know, how do we get throughout the day, you know, the ones that do have a shop, uh, how do we get through the day? You know, how do we get through the day period? Right. I don't, have I, a, there's, I don't have, a there's no way I do what, what I can do and the numbers that I can push with, without my wife, you know, not only does she knock out my R and I's, but she handles all of the paperwork. And paperwork is is ours. No. Daniel, you just before the show started, Daniel come in. He, he was dragging ass. You know, we watched his forehead slide across his desk in front of his his computer. <laughs> there, I mean, it was it was all bad. And what what was the cause of your anguish for the day, Daniel? Yes, tell us, Daniel. Daniel. My Tony the Tiger, she called in sick today, and so I had to do everything. And I've got this hail car sitting here, so I wanted to get that thing done. And, of course, when she's not here, I have to do estimates. I have to do all my own paperwork and all that. And, like, today I I spent – there was one segment of the day where I spent an hour just doing estimate after estimate for a straight hour. So I didn't get to work. And what you guys have to realize is you have to think about, okay, how much money can you make by pushing dents? And then, and then what does it cost you to hire somebody to do that kind of work? And it's obvious that you can hire somebody for a lot less money than what, what you can make in that time period. So, you know, the thing is, I, I suggest to guys to look at body shops Look at service writers. Um, you know, those type of people are the kind of people you want to look for that aren't happy with their jobs. You know, you got to be careful about poaching somebody, but, um, you know, you, you got to look in those realms because that's where I found uh, the gal that, that works for me. And originally I hired her for doing just the books. And then she... When I was too busy, she ended up doing an estimate, and I go, "Oh, you got more money than I would have gotten," and boom, that was that was it for the rest of the time. Yeah. And um, and now she still does that, and I I really enjoy just being able to put my headphones on and just push all day. If I don't have to talk to a customer, that's a good day for <laughs> See, me. And I'm I'm the complete opposite, Daniel. I do not have office staff, and I regret it, but I, I'm. I'm I'm a wimp. I'm I'm a I wuss out, man. I do not want to spend the money. I'm cheap and I don't want to I don't want to get someone, but I should. I know I should because the what you just explained, the hours yeah. that I spend oh yeah, smoozing over the customers and doing estimates and answering the phones and and checking on the painter and checking on my well, work and then like where you work at Vince, your your location is not as prominent as mine and so I get a lot more constant drive-in people. Hey, I just want to come in for a quick estimate. They're driving by. Maybe we're even thinking about doing the dent seriously, but yeah, I get I get quite a few people coming in for estimates. I don't know how many people you get a day. I, I get a handful, but it's mainly people that work in the area and they drive by every day and they're like, oh, you know what? I do have a dent on my car. Let me go pop in there during lunch break or whatever. Yeah. You know, that's the worst part, especially I hate that the most is that I do not get a lunch break in peace. You know, <laughs> yeah. I try to stop at 12, sit down with my painter and whoever else is there and uh, sit there and chit chat and catch up on the day and eat a lunch and watch a little bit of the news. And lo and behold, every time I put a, a piece of food in my mouth, someone pulls up. It's like, right. <laughs> uh, you know, and, you know, that's just part of the anguish. But I, I yeah. yield 30 to 40 estimates a day. And it's not, uh, I shouldn't say 30 to 40 estimates a day. I should say 30 to 40. I, I was going to say, that's a lot of estimates. That's a lot of estimates. I have 30 to 40 contacts a day between. Yeah. But, but phone, right? Phone, phone email, email, uh, email. walk-in, uh, text messages. You know, Boxer. 
I, I Voxer, yeah. <laughs> I would actually rather that people do not email me and do not call me. Just send me a freaking picture by text. You know, mine, mine during the work season, my worst is all my Facebook messaging because I refuse to put it on my phone. Right. Um, I'll get messenger on my tablet. My tablet's always at the shop with me and everything else. But Facebook messenger is right at this moment in time, uh, the worst way to get in contact with me. It's, uh, it's going to change next year. It has to change, but, um, Facebook messenger is the absolute worst way to get in contact with me. Yeah. So I check my email more than messenger. So what, let me ask you this. What do you think it would cost you to hire somebody? Uh, minimum 65,000 a year. Southern yeah. California. That's, yeah. that's poverty. I mean, that's below poverty. If you're not making 125 a year, you're, you're freaking eating top ramen and hot. So dogs. let's break it down. How much, how, how much is that hourly? Do you know? Uh, 65. Yeah. That's probably about five grand or about five grand a month. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, about 5,500 5, a, a month. How many, yeah. how much yeah. an hour? Oh, I don't know. 15, oh, okay. Wait 15, a second. Now. Something like that. So it's 5,500 a day. And then if you divide that by an eight hour work day, it, you know, it's uh, $687 and 50 cents a day is roughly what it would cost you. So where you have to no. ask yourself, really that much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, no, no something, something's much. wrong. All right. Hang on. So we're looking, Oh shoot. Yeah. Whoops. My bad. <laughs> yeah. All right. Something's I will, wrong. I will firstly admit I am, Testing a, a quality whiskey out of Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> well, I'll drink. For this, but we're talking sixty-five thousand a year. So I pay my gal twenty-two dollars an hour, and she's worth every penny. How many hours a week, though? She works uh, four days a week. So uh, what, thirty-hour day weeks? Yeah. Okay. So and so you're talking twelve hundred bucks a week. She she frees up enough time that I, I 31 and a quarter quadruple wow. my money on her. And, but she's also, she's doing my books and she's doing, doing my estimates. Dude, you're getting a deal. Yeah. So, Vince, so you're that's talking, what you should look for is that kind of a person. Yeah. Vince, you're talking 31, 31, 25 an hour for 31, 65,000 a year. That's right. figuring 40 hours a week. Yeah. 52 weeks a year. So if you give them a paid, week, two week vacation, whatever. So $31 an hour. Now let's say you spend three hours a day dealing with your customers. So that person doing that job would cost you ninety three seventy five for three hours worth of work. In that same three hours, how much would you make pushing dents? Uh, 93.75 in three hours. Yeah. That's all that person would cost you. Yeah. No, in three hours retail, I probably uh, three hours. Let's say uh, three, four, four fifty. So, on the low yeah. end, you you would step up what they would cost per day in just your free time, right? But like Daniel, he's only paying his girl like thirty four thousand a year. But you could find somebody who wants to only do it part time. Yeah, while their kindergartner or first grader is going through their five hour school day and that five hours could expand right over lunch, which is your worst busiest time. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it could be, you know, could be money in the bank. Yeah. 20, $25 an hour. Oh, sure. Uh, you know, really something to think about all of you with the retail shop, really think about that front office staff and whether or not that person, you know, math it out. What is the going wage in your area for that office staff? What's it going to cost you? How many hours per day, do you spend dealing with the customers, insurance companies, doing the I mean, mundane I, day-to-day tasks? I can guarantee you, if you've got if you got the people coming in for estimates, it it will pay for itself in that if they're good at doing an estimate. And then all they have to do is learn Mobile Tech RX, and they're just plugging in the numbers, measuring the dent, you know. And and my gal, she she comes to me every once in a while. Hey. Just wanted to ask, is, is this accessible? Is, is this going to be a problem, you know, in this area and whatnot? Sure. And I go out and look at it and I give her the thumbs up and say, yeah. And then she goes back to doing her job and I go back to doing mine. Now, it's it's not yeah. a sexist thing. And I'm not trying to make this a sexist thing. But do you think the, the clients, the customers are more comfortable dealing with a woman and getting their estimate rather than yours? Because I know you you could come across. I'll say no. No? 
No, I mean, honestly, Tony, when she first started, she had to over justify herself um, all the time. She used mm-hmm. to have to tell everybody that she grew up in, in an auto body. Uh, her dad owned an auto body shop. And she, she would over justify herself and, and oversell people. I, I had to sit her down a few times and say, Hey, look, stop overselling yourself. You don't need to do that. Um, My uh, wife's had customers come in and be like, no, I need to talk to one of the men. And you know, the worst pro- people for that yeah. are older women. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those, those, my wife has felt the most insulted dealing with a woman in her 60s and 70s because <laughs> she, won't, she won't talk to my wife, you know, no matter what. Now, even though my wife, you know, they come back, talk to me, and then I just send her right back up to talk to my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With my wife. yeah. You know, and it was that way all the way back when we owned our own body shop. Too. Sure. I it, could see that because my mom's no 79. She'll be 80 in, uh, in December, and she is still insulting to talk to. I mean, <laughs> she's... <laughs> <laughs> she's a salty old Irish woman that, uh, yeah. you know, if you talk to her, if you catch her on the phone, you're going to call her Mr. D'Alessandro because she's been smoking <laughs> for so long. You know, yeah. my cousins call her Uncle Chris instead of Auntie Chris. <laughs> but she, man, she laid out some zingers today. That, uh, when I, I talked to my mom at minimum one time a week. And, uh, I mean, she is like, Mom, you can't say that in day, this day and age. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't care. <laughs> it's like relax. my dad was the same way when he was around. He, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So stereotypical, but yeah, uh, I, it is something that I'm probably not going to consider now that I'm selling my business. But it is something right, that I'm going right. to propose to the next people because I know for a fact. Listen, guys, I don't do. I pay zero advertisement. I have no advertisement overhead at all, and if I advertised, I could be at least double the amount of income that my my sure. business makes. And, and that's going to require staff. It's going to require staff. That's why I don't advertise because I can't handle all the all the responsibilities. Yeah, and and maybe that's another thing to look for when you're considering an office staff is, you know, a younger person is going to be a lot more savvy with Facebook or Instagram or whatever and maybe be able to post pictures and and do a little bit of that so look some look for somebody that can do dual roles so when it isn't busy what else can they do can they do the book work can they do your your facebook posts for your business or whatnot yeah Yeah. that's a really good idea there daniel that is daniel yeah 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 Yeah. somebody that can handle that social media our our world is so different i'm 45 i i'm still getting my butt whooped on social media you know but the reality is that's the world we live in and and it covers every age group. Yeah. So if you got somebody that's savvy on it, they're also worth their weight in gold because that's just like advertising that you're not paying somebody else to do. You're already paying somebody yeah. to do that. Sure, sure. So, yeah, no, that's a, a very good point. Because, you know, be, between Facebook and, and Instagram and everything else, even with carrying on the stuff with the responsibilities of PDR tool time and my day-to-day stuff, and fixing dents, it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff yeah. to handle. And, if, and then if you look at it even further, like uh, I rent half my building to a detailer. We share Tony. So in actuality, I pay her half of what I, I already said because we're sharing her. And she does his books. She does his estimates too. So I hope Tony's again, not listening to our podcast because she needs a raise. <laughs> <laughs> 34000 a year. I I just I just gave her a uh, paid vacation, so all right. And I and I bought her a ring doorbell <laughs> to to where Alcatraz <laughs> Island. It's like here here wherever she a, wants to go, man. Yeah, here's your paid vacation. Here's the Heck ferry yeah. ticket to Alcatraz. Yeah. Somebody like that, man. They're worth their weight. I, I pay 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 for some of her uh, health care too. So all right, yeah. okay. <laughs> she loves me, and I love her. Wow. Well, that's great. Yeah, that and that's yeah. I think that's a really great point too about looking towards somebody younger. Uh, with all the online school training and everything else, even if they're not savvy with the book work, um, if you find the right person, that's a great asset to your business. You can get them trained on. But you, look at the, the job pool. Maybe, you know, like, like Vince's mom, 
you know, she's older. She probably doesn't think she can work anymore. That might be the kind of person you want to, to hire. You can hire at a lower rate. Well, and having, if they're that mean, the adjusters don't stand a chance. Yeah, yeah right. exactly. <laughs> like a Walmart yeah. greeter. Yeah. Come here, Granny. Come over here and write some yeah. estimates. And uh... <laughs> or how about a disabled vet in a wheelchair or something like that? Or, yeah, or no, you know, cool. there's 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 other. There's a huge huge revenue. You know, um, yeah. look into it. Consider it. Do the math. If I had to, if I had to do it all over, I would probably go. I used to go and teach classes at Farmers Insurance. You know, to show them what PDR could. Uh, capabilities were, and those yeah. were a bunch of green guys that were or, and gals that were going into being estimate or uh, uh, adjusters, right? Yeah, so you're the guy, you're right? <laughs> <laughs> now I know who to blame. Yes, that's me. <laughs> I gave okay. it up though because they they didn't pay me a dime to come do that. Once a month, I would go and do a whole presentation and this and that, and then go I've out done and it do for a State demo. Farm. So yeah, I've done it too. And then yeah. after like four or five months, I'm like, why am I taking away from my work? Yeah. I had to go and do this for these And people. they would have all new guys the next time you go back to train them, right? Yeah. Yeah. Every month it was new set. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm like, you know what? You guys need to start paying me to do this. At least throw me like a Target gift card or something. You know, <laughs> there's nothing, not even a lunch. Throw, throw me some work. Yeah. Yeah. None of them are going to throw them work because these same adjusters were going into the body shops and going, uh, yeah, that's that's uh, PDR right there. And the body shop owner is like, get the hell out of here. You know, <laughs> you're not going to tell yeah. me what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's so. It, right? Didn't you have some other tools to talk about there, Vince? You got something that. What were you gonna? Well, I upgraded my 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 hot box. and I I can't really report a hundred percent because I have yet to use the aluminum hot box. And I'll be, you know, hitting up John internally to find out, you know, some some tricks. But I do have to say, because I had the wild box for a year and a half now, maybe two. All right. And I've yeah. And everybody talks about is there a difference? There's a yeah. di- absolutely. There's a difference. There is a difference. Yeah. yeah. And I can't believe I I wasted my time with the wild all these. <laughs> years. You know, it's the difference between eating a, a Morton steak or going to the Ponderosa for a yeah. steak. You know. Huh. Uh, just the feel, the, the the quickness of it. Every and I've only been using it now for about a week, week and a half. So I can't fully report on it, but definitely, you know, there is a there difference. is a difference. And on top of it, I I was able to use the Brett Ringland uh, long cord, which we talked about. I was yeah. happy yeah. that that transferred over. I'm hoping it transfers over to the aluminum hot box as well. It does. I, I've swapped my cables back and forth between my aluminum and steel oh, hot box. Good they're all know. still they're all still four cable. So oh, okay. and all four lines are hooked up. So all it all it's doing is registering. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's not really, you know, unique. Cable, I really recommend that yeah. I, I really recommend cable. the extended wand too. The extended wand. I have not yeah, but that's splurged. expensive, man. I think it is, but what it does is it moves, you know. Moves it yeah. out past your hand like a dent rod, so you can and see it gives farther. you a better field of view. Yeah, the and yet you still get all the feedback into your your hand because that carbon fiber translate you know transfers the vibration right back to your hand. Okay. So you feel, but you get to see it that much easier because your hand, you know, your meat hook is out there yeah. and it's shadowing that the dent, you know. Yeah. yeah, and this with that wand, I mean, it's right there in the open, and it is. I wish there was it, a way to do that with the aluminum. Does the uh, the wand doesn't work for the aluminum one, huh? No, that aluminum head is like five pounds. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's huge. Yeah. When I open up, I put box. it on the end of mine, and by the time you got done wrestling in, you're just praying you didn't scratch the panel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, John, is there anything? I I've never did this, but is is there anything you could put on the bottom of a hot box to prevent it from scratching? My issue with that is environmental. Um, you could put some thin felt and it would, you know, a, a right, or you could say, take a, um, uh, one of the, the rags, a, a quali- high quality, you know, like, uh, microfiber. Uh, yeah. The microfiber towel and rubber banded around there in a little bit. But as soon as you get a teeny rock piece oh, of metal done. shaving, like I'm in body shops all the time, oh, a little yeah. metal shaving, yeah, you're it's done. over. Yeah, you yeah. you've thrashed it because when you get that paint hot, hot paint is soft. Yeah, 
Well, I was even thinking of possibly putting clear bra over it, you know, a paint protection film and seeing if that would slide easier. Might but work. I, um, what I would worry about is the heat. The heat would melt it. What are you talking it's, about, man? You just stick it on my, your Magnatech, man. It's fine. No, it's, get... it's not that. It's like I, I used to drop my, my wand all the time, you know, and, and there's there's just daily use. You're going to scratch it. Uh so see, and I, I inspect mine and clean it regularly, yeah, but I will yeah. admit I don't have a bench grinder, but I do have a rotary buffer mm. that I carry a double headed looks just like the bench grinders. Yeah. And, um, when I come home at the end of the season, everything I own gets polished across that, including the tips on my, uh, hot box and stuff. Well, now you, the, here's a tip the top for you, John. Yeah. Just take a DA with the, like some 600. Oh, I've I've got six hundred and eight hundred grit sanding pads. Yeah, but I've got smoother than now the body shop that I'm at. I mean, I've got this huge bay. I'm I'm in like a thirty by forty five foot bay, just me and my wife, and then I have a whole another twenty five by sixty because I can fit two full size pickups in it. Um, beside me that that are all for me and work so, on it at the same time. Yeah. Wow, that's a big bay. I, I've got. This, just tremendous amount of space, you know, for a PDR, you know. Um, but uh, so I have my buffer there at the shop. So every time anything of mine gets like unpolished, I'm over there and I'm polishing up all my tips, my tap downs on the hammers. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm keeping everything brand new. Yeah. So no, that's, and that's a good thing about having a painter in my shop is I just go over and grab his DA and you'll, yeah. you know, real quick, freshen everything right back up. Freshen it so up. I have not had a risk of scratch with any of my, my tools. Okay, cool. So. Cool. Hey, uh, the other thing I want to let our listeners know is I have 10 doodahs that just came in on Friday and I finally put them up on the site at magnatechmat.com. There's free shipping right now. Everything is set properly to the price. I got tactical balls. I got the balls, the big black balls, John Hiley's balls. <laughs> and John's balls. I got John's balls. I got uh, doodahs. I got 10 left and I also have the mats. So, and that sale is still going until the end of September, but, uh, we're coming to the end of the show here. We're at the, the 50 minute mark. So we're going to start wrapping it up here. And, uh, we want to thank everyone for tuning into this episode. I hope you got some knowledge out of it. I know I did. Well, you better, I mean, we're getting you to hire our office staff. Right. Yeah. So, uh, John, do you have any parting words, any last, uh, moments of uh, clarity that you want to shine on our beautiful listeners spread the love don't don't do stupid stuff daniel love life in the perfect mai tai <laughs> and love oh no up. level level up those tools. <laughs> sorry <laughs> and i still have to come up with something this has been another episode of pdr tool time